Okay, so I got two drives here. Um, the um, an IDE drive, 160 gig IDE, and a one terabyte SATA version two drive. Um, well, SATA three, but this motherboard supports SATA version two. Anyway, so yeah, we're gonna the for, for this example. This could be your 80 gig ID. It doesn't matter. I got a 160 gig, but it's they're, they're both the same roughly. Um, actually, this ID drive is a hundred and uh, is seven seventy two hundred RPM, so it's probably faster than the 80 gig 5400 RPM Western Digital you got. I'm not sure, but it doesn't matter. Um, we're going to format the drive first. Get it ready. Because in this case, um, you want to use your 80 gig for all your downloads. As a spare drive, have all the space to do it in. Um, I'm just using the 160 because it's all I got. That, in comparison. So first thing we want to do is stick up GPRT. Get uh, it's here. It may not be in your. You can add it to your favorites or, or actually from here, just so we can work on it going to add it to the desktop and I want to show you whoops I'm going to add this to the desktop disks it's a benchmarking utility as well it will tell you the temperature of the drive the right cache uh, smart CTL settings it's very very powerful um, copy this so let's move this over here so they're out of the way we're not going to we're only going to use them once each first off Bring up GPRT. Okay. So I booted up. I got two drives. My first drive is SDA. It's the one, well, it shows 149, but it's a 160 gig Western Digital IDE. The second drive is SDB. Whatever. SATA drive, one terabyte. Doesn't matter if they're SDB, D, or C. As long as you know the drive you're working on, you have to select it here. Obviously, I install Linux Mint on the one terabyte. Well, so I don't want to. Obviously, I don't want to blow this away. So we're gonna. Yours would be 80 gig or 77 gig or 78. It's the one you want to work with. Doesn't matter what you got in it. Like right, I think I had Windows on here before years ago. Or, as you can tell by the label, you know the first partition Microsoft sucks. The second one Windows. <laughs> and Linux rules in the last one. We want to delete this. We want to start with a brand new drive, fresh, formatted. Well, you can highlight each one of these, right click and delete, or, you know, highlight, and go up here to the, whoops, edit, where's the delete device, partitions, sorry, it's delete right here, same thing. Or, do it here. Three different ways. Um, when you get used to G, uh, GPT, you can work out of here, but follow the menus up here. The easiest way to blow them all out, I can do this one at a time, like there, and click there, delete. Then I have to apply this. Okay? There's two ways to do it. You apply it to delete it. It's, a, it's just a, a thing that they don't want you to make a mistake. Or you can go up to here and apply. It doesn't really matter. So I blew away one partition. And as soon as it's done, it shows it free or unallocated. That's good. The easiest way to start with a fresh drive, and you can see here it shows it grayed out. Anyway, instead of one at a time, you can do it that way. I'm just going to go, make sure I'm on my 160 you'd be on your 80 go right to the device itself and create a new partition table it automatically selects MS-DOS because unless your drive is larger than two terabytes which is really big it's gonna select MS-DOS if, if I open this you see a lot of other ones in there Mac lots for Apple you don't have an Apple computers we don't so we don't need it uh, 
PC-98, that's from the late 80s, early 90s, DOS 16-bit days. Sun Microsystems, well, we don't have one of those puppies. Um, Amiga, you know, similar to Atari, I, maybe not. No, Amiga's different. Okay. Then AIX, that's IBM's uh, version of Unix, which nobody uses. It's dead. Even IBM servers use Red Hat Linux now. Okay, so GPT. If your drive is larger than two terabytes, if you ever buy one and you plug it in, it'll automatically select this. You can still use GPT, but you don't need it. The default will be MS-DOS. For all the drives you'll be using, and uh, you create a new partition table, clean, blows away. It, it, this is important because it blows away the master boot record. Anything that that disk was ever used for before is cleaned out and get it ready to be ready for reformat. So the default MS-DOS, leave it, click apply. There, just it removed everything, took the whole space of the drive, and now it's completely unallocated. It's ready for a file system. And we're gonna pick ext4. You should always pick that in Linux. So like you know you can right click here, select new or go to now we're done with the device so now we go to partition select left click new here or right click here and pick new they're all the same thing don't touch anything unless you want to add partitions and change the sizes you can fuck around with this but leave um, uh, leave these and this and this side um, anyway we're taking the whole drive. You're going to take the whole 80 gig for this little thing. So, primary partition, yeah, never, don't pick extended. Primary and file system is going to be ext4. Um, you could pick NTFS, FAT32. Um, if we were setting up an installation, we'd add swap, but we don't need it. We're going to go with ext4, the latest. Um, label, you could doesn't matter just for test purposes we're just going to format the drive okay so it's ready to do it it's selected new partition number one it's going to take the whole drive it's just right here it's waiting for you to apply it and you can apply it either here apply all, all operations or from edit here it doesn't do it automatically because it's a safety feature in case are you sure you want to do this so yeah we'll click on this little guy here and it warns you oh you're gonna lose all your data okay whatever alright so that's done close it now the ID drive is um, the whole thing is ext4 ready to mount do whatever we want okay and obviously didn't touch my other drive my SATA so this is formatted ready to mount ready to copy stuff but before we do that we close this I want to show you this other utility which is in all your Linux mid it's I forget where it is all uh, let's go to D for there it is there but anyway okay let's double click on that bring that up again it shows two drives the 160 gig and the one terabyte it even shows serial number of the drive to make this is a 160 gig Hitachi ID oh I said Western Digital I was wrong okay my SATA drive the one terabyte that's a Western Digital doesn't matter but this is a very powerful tool as you can see it even shows the temperature the hard drives and their full serial numbers um, there's a ton of settings in here that I never really play with it's kinda cool you can do self test smart data um, you can play around with the power management um, you can even uh, you can spin it up or down which I wouldn't play with the RPM it it always goes to the highest and change the right cache okay whatever the main thing here is this is a good tool okay we close this disks right here it's a good tool to test the speed 
of your hard drive that's any good. Okay? <coughs> Let's do the ID first. So I'm going to go down here. Did I do it from here? No, I don't want to do the other. I don't know. want to do the smart test. We're going to do the benchmarking. You can format it from here and edit mount points, but that's that I would use GPRT. This is a good tool for some low-level hardware playing around with hard drives. Normally, this is I would click benchmark. Okay, it's right here. Go down to benchmark. Now we're gonna start a benchmark. Never mind this stuff here. I already ran it. So click start benchmark on the IDE drive. Standard test. Okay, 100 samples, 10 meg each. Um, check a thousand times. Perform a write benchmark as well. So I'm gonna start it. Put your password in. There it goes. Now, as you can see, if you can't see from the graph, it doesn't show very well. It's this drive's going around 75 megabytes per second, read or write. Down here, it lists it as about 75 megabyte read capability and uh, 67, 66 um, megabytes per second write. Um, the last thing it's going to do is the average access time. That shows you how fast it can access the data through the ca drive cache, through the cache on the drive. So, so basically, this is almost done. 61, 66. We're about this drive fastest it's, it can go is about 65 megabytes per second, with uh, 13 and a half millisecond access time. Okay, not bad. Well, now let's test the SATA. So I can pick even in the middle of the drive. I'll go in the middle of the drive, and uh, which is not the fastest. The front is the fastest, but that's where my Linux is installed, so I don't want to fuck with that, or your Linux. This is your computer, by the way, so I'm just farting around with things. So, middle of the drive, do the same test again going to benchmark, but this time I'm going to benchmark the one terabyte SATA. Off we go, start bench, same test. 100 number of samples, uh, 10 megabyte per sample, 1000 times over. Go, there we, let's, first thing you notice, 135, 120 megabyte per second transferability. Average read rate, almost 130 megabytes per second. Average rate, about 105. Um, compare that to the 60 megabytes. This is 120 megabytes per second. This drive is twice as fast read and write capability as the IDE. And the average access time, the cache is very fast. It's only 8.5 millisecond. Um, SATA 2, as I said, uh, this motherboard has SATA 2 uh, bandwidth capability, so it utilizes the drive fully. SATA 3 is even faster. Uh, unfortunately, your motherboard only has SATA 1 on your white one or the black one. So, yeah, you're not going to see much difference between SATA 1 and IDE. On, on a SATA 2 capable motherboard, um, with whatever drives, SATA drives, you can hit yeah, twice as fast. That's the difference between SATA and IDE. Now that we cleared that up, okay, let's get back to the big problem. Well, we're finished with GPRT, and uh, oh, I'll just leave this here, but we're finished with those. And we formatted it, and now it shows up as one of the devices here, and that's it here, 160 gig volume, if you can see that. Uh, and you click on it, and there it is, right here. It just mounted itself. We know because we can go in it and do stuff. Oh, but we can't create a folder. In fact, let's go back in your home directory, and uh, no, no, this fucking mouse drives me crazy. Uh, all right, let's just uh, real quick. 
So I want to copy um, downloads over to this new drive we just formatted with a full 160 gig space. So I'll drag and drop it like you did the other day. And there you go. Same problem you got. You were right, dude. Just it's permissions. We have to change the permissions. We have to go in as administrator or root or super user. By the way, in Linux, the terminology of root or administrator or super user is the same. Okay, so we can't do anything until we change the permissions. Uh, I don't want to have to change the permissions on every folder we create in here as, as root and all this. In this case, like your 80 gig drive, let's change the permissions on the whole drives so you can copy what you want in or out of it. Alright, let's start from scratch. It's still mounted here. Let's open up your folder again, your home folder. We can do everything from here pretty well. So we know we can't write to it because we got to change the permissions. Alright, if you notice here in your under your home directory, you've got desktop to the right, and it's showing it's available as a folder on your left. Documents, documents, downloads, downloads, music, music, pictures. Okay, it's all there. Trash is system. It's a system thing, which is universal. And something else, file system, which is not over here, but it's here. Now, if I click any folder in here, music, or inside music, there's nothing. Uh, inside downloads, is there any? Okay, I'll click here. I'll click this, and click one of the. It doesn't matter. It's showing the folder I'm in. If I click file system now, this thing, as you see, it says open the contents of the file system. From the top of the file system, it's telling me where this folder is. Doesn't matter. It's saying it's in home, Randy downloads FFmpeg. So I go there, Randy downloads, or I could just click on that on there. The point is, um, this just shows you uh, what it looks like command line. This is cool because from the top of the disk, my SATA drive, it's showing, you know, your home directory, Randy, whatever. All right. Before we get too far, let's just fix the permissions. That's the main thing here. So, working from your own home folder, this is still mounted, this drive here. Um, just left click once here to highlight it. There it is there. Now, click the file system, and it tells you it's mounted in from the top level, slash media, slash Randy. 60 gig drive. So basically the location is slash topmost directory, root directory, super user direct, administrator directory, whatever you want to call it. It's not a directory, it's um, where everything installs at the top of your drive. So we'll go back to this. We know what's in media. We want to change the permissions on this drive here. We can do it from here because as far as the system's concerned, this is a, like the serial number of the drive. It's called a unique user ID for all devices. We don't need to know that because nobody's going to remember a folder called 26D4 Plutonium Blow Me Up and this is crazy. Who knows these things? Uh, 160 gig volume. If yours was an 80, it shows up here. You've probably seen it. There you have. So, what we want to do is, um, okay, so. Let's go back up to rent. We know what we can do. If we change the permissions here, if we try to, it won't work because inside, as super user, as Randy, it doesn't show the um, any folders. So we got nothing to change. Here's what we can do. Go back up and to media. We want to go into Randy here from media because it's mounted under this and if it was a DVD it would be media Randy DVD or if it was a CD media Randy CD or if it, if you installed a SATA drive um, and you as an external drive it would be media Randy 
some like your USB 3 drive. It's one terabyte. It shows up there. You always see it there. We want to change the permission of the whole drive. So what I'm going to do here, okay, selected this file system. Just want to go to Randy here, right under media. Right click on that, and now go all the way down. Follow this right to where it says open as administrator. Left click on that. It's going to ask for the password. Put your password in. Now, we're as root. Now you can see the difference. You see, um, well, I don't need this anymore. Give me an idea. You have Randy as the user. But now, because we click open, on, open as administrator, it shows super user. This it's it's a safety feature in all Unixes, you know. You don't normally need to do this. Very rare. One of the cases is right now setting up a new drive, any new drive. So from here, it doesn't matter. Like this drive is still it's called as super user. It sees this drive uniquely as this. It doesn't matter what it sees it at. We're gonna click on this right click go all the way down to properties okay never mind any of this shit here just go all the way down to properties because now we're clicking on that unique drive you know it's a drive because it's got the little hard drive in the folder so we know we're at the topmost level of the drive or top part of the drive whatever slash that drive and click properties right click and properties now when we go into permissions we can change it from root to randy. We couldn't do it before. If you watch, I'll leave that open. Let's go back to this drive. If I right click, I can unmount it. If I right click here, I can un I can't go why can't I change anything? All right, let's see. Um what if I go file system? What if I can I as randy? Okay, here it is here. Let me see if I can change it here. I go properties permissions you see it won't allow it because I'm Randy still here I'm not super user so let's close this and go back to that window we just opened we're gonna change it from root oops to Randy group Randy others leave others because they have access to it Fern can um, watch movies off the drive she can copy read from the drive um, it's important to this part to apply permissions to enclosed files. This is so that if you create other folders, it will pl apply your permissions of Randy as owner and group Randy to all those. So you can write to it just like you, you do your normal hard drive. And we're done. That's it. Close. Close this. Now, <coughs> I would, as a test, unmount it first, bring up your normal folder, now click on it once, okay, now we're in the drive, let's move this over here, open up a new folder, now let's see if we can copy downloads, I'm going to take this, drag it across, and voila it's copying the whole thing 500 megabytes what the hell did I download well anyway it's almost done as you can see everything's in there oh some junk that's it man as easy as uh, not as easy as that oh one more thing I'm gonna show you how fast the uh, command line is. First of all, let's go in here and make sure create a folder, test, whatever, it works. You can now write, read anything back and forth. Let's delete this for now. Delete. Gone. Today. Sometime. Delete. Delete. OK. 
Okay, now I want to go back in file system. Go to Randy. Randy. Uh, try that again, motherfucker. There. Media. Randy. Open this administrator. Right click. Properties. Permissions. Change it back to root. Root. Apply to all enclosed folders underneath. Close. Done. Done. Let's unmount it and open your folder. Mount it again. And let's see. Put it over here for a sec. Let's see if we can copy. Downloads. In it again. Nope, got error. Okay. That's the GUI way. Now I'll show you the command line way. Don't need it, but so this tells me everything that's mounted. DF dash H. So I know it's there. So I go to slash media slash Randy. There. To uh, list it, shows it as that weird serial number drive. I really don't care. I know it's owned by root, but I want to change it to Randy. So here's what I do: sudo chown, which break broken down means ch change ownership. Do it recursively, and owner Randy group. Randy. So, sudo means give me super user ability or root administrator. Chown, change ownership, do it recursively. And I want the owner, the new owner of this folder or drive device to be Randy as owner. Use a colon uh, and then Randy as group double click just to highlight it drop it there password in done now if I do this and this actually never mind that if I just go double click on this little guy here there and I'm in the drive now if I want to copy I don't need to copy something big oh it doesn't matter now I'm gonna Actually, I can change this now. Delete. Now I'm going to drag and drop the download over there. There it is. Command line can do it with two commands that fast. The GUI does it. You used to the GUI. That's fine. It stumped me though. I don't know why. So it's the same thing. It'll do the same thing as well. Because what I did with command line is the same thing we just did with the GUI. If we uh, go to the drive again and uh, get the properties of it under media, uh, Randy can open as administrator. Now you become administrator under slash media. I can left click, go all the way down to properties and go to permissions and there it is Randy Randy same as you can do it GUI or command line the GUI that's it there uh, I don't know what else to show you but that's pretty well it it's too long too stupid oh well hey best I can do man